Buying games as a broke gamer boy or a BGB for short has always been somewhat of an issue. You see, growing up and relying on your parents to get you everything because it's illegal to have a job at that age in 90% of the developed world meant that you had to choose your battles wisely. Did you go buy a game that you knew that you could beat in one monster energy drink infused weekend? No, that'd be stupid. You rent it, you beat it, and then you move on with your life. You always had to think about which games would last you the longest so that you can get the most bang for your buck, or BFYB for short, because because nobody wanted to spend $60 and have a very expensive paperweight lying around, or a BEPW for short. So how does BGBs or BGGs avoid getting BEPWs and get the most BFYBs in our games? That took me so long to say. Well the answer lies in one key aspect. Replayability, or how long games last. Unfortunately, games end. You can't explore the depths of Twilight Town forever, and eventually the princess has to be rescued and returned to the castle. Unless, of course, Mario is over it, then that's another game altogether. So how do companies deal with the inevitable end of their games? To keep this simple, we're gonna talk about the four golden categories of extending playtime. Number one, difficulty. Number two, stats. Number three, collectathons. And number four, my personal favorite, change. Quick editor's note, since multiplayer technically relies on having someone else to play with, I'm not going to use multiplayer formats of games, aka Mario Maker or Street Fighter, because without other people there, those games would be boring as hell. It's a completely different video, and I will talk about that eventually, but for now, let's get into it. Number one, difficulty. Though these days, that term is lovingly attached to games like Sekiro and Cuphead and Dark Souls, difficulty has been a way that companies use to artificially extend the playtime of their game as long as Earth has existed. And in order to go over that, we're going to take a jump through time. The late 80s and 90s was kind of a hard time for gamers. It was around the time that game devs thought, wait a minute, maybe we should put a point behind all this ruthless murder and slaughtering of innocent turtles. And thus, stories were made, mascots were named, and depth was given. Instead of just being a ship in space, shooting at Easter Island heads, you were now Link, the champion of Hyrule, going to save Princess Zelda, or Mario, the champion of the Bronx, New York, going to save Princess Peach, or Ronald McDonald, champion of, of burgers, going to save not one, but two children that he unapologetically sent into a hellish landscape. Because why not? <laughs> and with games now having a concise beginning, middle, and end, it meant one thing. Shelf life was no longer infinite, aka all games had to expire. And though some developers welcome the idea of delivering an entire experience with the inclusion of level codes and the very rare save file, a lot didn't. Being unabashedly reliant on cheap tactics that kept you coming back, some ass bitch companies or ABCs artificially extended the playtime of their games by making them fucking impossible to beat. Though it wasn't always on purpose, a lot of these old games scaled so quickly in difficulty that you most likely would never get to the end, which kind of made us play them forever. You know the ones I'm talking about, the games that lull you in with a few cute walk in the park levels only to drop you in a contrast bullet hell the second you get comfortable. The replayability of these games relied entirely on the fact that you got up and you tried again. No matter how hard and cheap and mind-numbingly bad these games were, you stood up you dusted off your glow in the dark sketchers, and you gave it one more go. And for that, I commend you. But fuck, did that suck. Obviously these days, hard games are more fair and actually had 5,000 Q&A testers to make sure you can get to the end without committing seppuku, but Jesus Christ, was that a hard time to be a gamer. Number two, stats, or as most of us know them, RPGs. This was around the time that RPGs actually started becoming a thing, which at the cost of our sanity introduced the concept of making us play something over and 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 over in order to make you progress just a little. If you ever played a JRPG or an MMORPG, you'd know exactly what I'm talking about. Oh boy, I can't wait to walk into this forest and kill 10 green slimes and then level up and then talk to the NPC and do what? Oh, I have to kill 10 more green slimes so that I can level up again? Great! Finally, I'm strong enough to go into this forest where it's the same sprite of the same slime except it's color swapped! <laughs> Obviously, since then, RPGs have developed and grindy RPGs are quickly becoming a thing of the past. Or the future with all these remakes. But you guys, you guys know how hard it was. Can you imagine how quick you would beat your favorite RPG if you only had to defeat every enemy once? You'd beat Final Fantasy in like 12 minutes. 
And though RPGs were a huge step forward in gaming, introducing levels of depth that we never seen before, stuff that you could learn about in my turn-based combat video, it did take them a while to develop. With technology advancing from the 2D realm into the 3D realm, save files were now a common courtesy in gaming. And now, since we were assisted no matter what in our, in our path from A to B, the longevity of games was once again in question. Surely RPGs already had a devout following, but there had to be something else. Obviously, with technological limitations and the inclusion of badass graphics, games had to find a way to extend their playtime, and thus we were introduced to collectathons. Collectathons were a genius way for game developers to maximize the use of their 3D real estate. You couldn't just gun it from A to B because, oh, what's this? Is there some feathers hidden over here? And what's that over there? Is that, is that a golden puzzle piece? Did you think you were done with the level? Well, too bad, fuck ass. Now you gotta lock in Lanky Kong and go back in that level to collect all the blue bananas. Does that sound fun to you? Yeah, I'll take 10. <laughs> and though this concept was kind of annoying at times, just remember that Mario 64 only had 15 stages, but 120 stars. If it weren't for you having to play the same levels over and over again, except with a minute difference to collect something, that game would have only lasted like 10 minutes. So do collectathons still work today? For the time that it was, stuffing every single level with 10,000 things to do was awesome. Obviously, through time, the collective hive mind of gamers got together and thought, wait a minute, these bitches is boring. And though collectibles are a thing in just about every single game these days, gaming had to evolve again. So where are we today? In a world where graphical and space limitations are a relic of the past, and, and CG looks better than real life? <laughs> It's not a good picture of me. Games should be lasting longer than ever, right? I mean, Doom itself was a 70 gigabyte download and that's not even on the larger scale of things. Does that mean that games are more replayable? I mean, kind of? It seems like game devs have all learned the ins and outs of making games longer. And though it doesn't necessarily mean that your games are gonna last you forever, it is cool that devs are doing whatever they can to make your games give you more bang for your buck. But what if I told you there was a replayable format that blew all the others out of the water? A, a format that had collectibles and, and stats and difficulty, and it even rewrote itself every single time that you played it? Are you kidding me? A format by the name of roguelikes, or, or roguelites, if you're one of those people who gets mad about that. Format that is completely reliant on number four, change. Roguelites are a testament to the power of replayability in gaming because that's all that these games are. To give you the tiniest rundown that I can, here's the kind of stuff that you should expect in these games. Every single time you play it, you start off as a sad, big diapered bad bitch with no family and one dollar to your name. As you play through the procedurally generated world, you get stronger and you level up and you become, and you become badass. But as you're evolving, the monsters are evolving too and they're getting way, way harder. And the monsters are taking more and more skill and damage to kill them until eventually you get to the main bad lad, or MDL, duh. And you either kill him and win, or you get outplayed and start off at the beginning of the game. If you win, congratulations. But if you lose, congratulations. Because no matter what you do, the game is going to be different and you get to experience it again. The levels change, the items change, and in just about every case, every single time you play it, you're unlocking more stuff to give you more change. How, how fucking cool is that? If you've been following me for a while, you'd know that roguelikes are my favorite kind of game. And I know I'm preaching to the choir by saying this, but there's a beauty in replaying a game that you love only for it to be different every single time. And yeah, RNG can be prevalent, and poopy items can lead to poopy runs, but the fact that you could play Enter the Gungeon for a whole day straight, or in my case, 125 hours, and still be neck deep in Discovery speaks volumes to me. The point of this video is that games end, and it sucks ass. I've had credit sequences that have hurt me more than most breakups, but I'm glad that game devs are doing whatever they can to extend the shelf life of their games. Whether it be by kicking the ever-loving shit out of you until your dumb hands do whatever they want you to do, making you kill a hundred green slimes in order to get to the red slime, putting 50 feathers all around the level, making you explore every single nook and cranny, or just by rewriting itself every single time you boot it up, I'm glad that games last as long as they can. Time spent in games that you love is magical. And I, for one, am glad that game devs keep extending it. So now I ask you, what's the most time you've spent in a single player game? 
Mine's would probably be Disgaea for the PSP, in which I clocked in over 100 hours. Or maybe Enter the Gungeon, which was 126 last time I checked. I played for an hour to get footage for this video. I hope the games you played were just as wonky. I'm Scooch, and I hope that you have a wonderful day. If you all haven't heard yet, I'm going to be streaming Monday through Thursday on my Twitch channel at Scooch Live, and it's pretty fun, and it's pretty wonky, and I've been trying a bunch of new things. Oh my god. Also, here's my second channel where frequent content should be released soon. So click on that and subscribe to that because there's gonna be frequent content, just thoughts or, or, or Reddit reactions or gameplay or stream highlights. I don't know. Go over there. It's more content. Go get over there. Get, go, go, get, go, get, go, get, get, go, get, get, go, go, get. Did you click it yet? Please tell me you clicked it. This is getting real tiring. These lights are hot. Click the, click the fucking circle. Click the fucking circle.